The University of Toronto Observatory is located at 60 St. George Street on the 16th floor of the McLennan Physical Labs, that is, at the very top of the Burton Tower, which is the tallest building on campus. The building was built in 1967 and is home to the Physics Department, the Astronomy Department, and the Canadian Institute for Theoretical Astrophysics. To get up to the observatory, we'll have to take the elevator all the way up to the 14th floor. Now that we've taken the elevator up as high as it will go, we still have to take the stairs up another two floors in order to get to the observatory itself. We've created a model solar system going up the stairs, where the number of steps represent the distances between the planets. On the top floor of the building are located our two observatory domes. The first we'll go visit is the refractor dome, which contains our 8-inch refracting telescope. At the end of this telescope is an 8-inch diameter lens which focuses light down the two and a half meter tube of the telescope down to the eyepiece. It's called a refracting telescope because the lens refracts light in order to focus it. This telescope is older than the physics building. It was built in 1965 by the Goto Telescope Company in Japan. In order to see through the telescope, you must look through the eyepiece located at the back of the telescope. There are three eyepieces that can rotate to give different magnifications. The shortest gives the most zoomed in view, while the longest gives the widest field view. Attached to the side of the 8 inch telescope is a small Coronado solar telescope equipped with a hydrogen alpha filter. This allows us to observe fine details on the surface of the sun. The large scope itself can be fitted with a solar filter, which makes it safe to view the sun through the telescope's lens. Remember, you should never look at the sun directly without protection, even with the naked eye. You'll notice that the telescope must be moved around by hand. This is because the only motorized component on the telescope is a tracking motor, which makes sure that the telescope follows the motion of the sky. Otherwise, the telescope is operated completely manually. To allow us to view the sky, the telescope dome opens up in a one meter wide window that extends to the top of the dome. The dome itself can rotate 360 degrees, which gives us a complete view of the entire sky. As you can imagine, lining the telescope up with the sun can be quite tricky because the sun is so bright. The mount of the telescope is an equatorial mount, which means that one axis points towards the north celestial pole, that is, the north pole of the sky. This is parallel to the Earth's rotation axis, which means that you can easily keep the telescope pointing at an object in the sky with a single motor. Some of the best things to observe through our telescopes are the planets that you can see in the night sky. We're going to start with the planet Mars. You may have noticed that Mars is bouncing around a little bit. This shimmering effect is due to turbulence in the Earth's own atmosphere. You might have noticed this white spot at the top of the red planet. That is, in fact, Mars's polar ice cap, which contains frozen CO2 and frozen water. The largest planet in our solar system, and probably the most easy to see through our 8-inch telescope, is the planet Jupiter. In this view, we can see cloud bands, which represent weather patterns seen in Jupiter's upper atmosphere. In this more zoomed out and longer exposure view of Jupiter, you can see these four little faint dots surrounding the gas giant. 
These are Jupiter's Galilean moons, called that because they were discovered by Galileo when he first looked at Jupiter with his telescope. Another planet that we can observe with our telescopes is Saturn, famous for its beautiful set of rings. In this view, we can clearly see the gap between the rings of Saturn and the planet itself. Though it's much more difficult to observe with the naked eye, we can also observe the planet Uranus with our telescopes. Seen here is a faint green blob. The planet Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun, and is also 20 times farther from the Sun than we are. In our second observatory dome, we have our 16-inch reflecting telescope. It's called that because it has a 16-inch diameter mirror at its base. Unlike the 8-inch telescope, this telescope is fully motorized, which means that we can control it remotely. Just as with the 8-inch telescope dome, this dome can also rotate a full 360 degrees which gives us a complete view of the sky. The 16-inch mirror is used to focus light from the sky down the tube of this telescope. This telescope collects four times as much light as the 8-inch telescope because it's twice as wide. As well as being used for our public outreach events, this telescope is used for research purposes by undergraduate students in their courses, as well as by graduate students to test their instruments. On the back of the telescope, there are several instruments to facilitate these activities, including a couple of CCD cameras and a spectrograph used to split light into its separate components. Just like the 8-inch telescope, the 16-inch reflector was built in the late 1960s by a company called Bowler and Chivins. Seen here are the original readout dials, which show the telescope's position in terms of right ascension and declination. Both the motion of the telescope and the telescope dome can be controlled by this computer, which is located in the control room right next to the telescope. Since these telescopes have been in operation since the late 1960s, we can see some of the earliest photos taken with this telescope. Some of them are on display in the 16-inch telescope dome. You can see here several deep sky objects, including nebulae and star clusters. The photos were taken using photographic plates since this was long before digital cameras existed. Some of the exposure times on these photos are several minutes to an hour long. This is because it took that much time to collect enough light from these faint objects to be able to see them in nice detail. All of these photos were taken by John Cormandy, who was an undergraduate student at the time, and James Gillespie, a former master's student at the David Dunlap Observatory. One floor down from the telescope domes is the observation balcony. Here we have an almost unobstructed view of the southern sky. We use this balcony to set up smaller portable telescopes during our public events. Here is that same view at night. There certainly is a lot of light pollution from those city buildings, but that doesn't prevent us from observing beautiful planets, stars, and nebulae. To finish up our virtual tour, I'll leave you with this view of the Big Dipper as seen from the roof of the physics building just outside of the observatory domes. I hope that one day you get to visit us in person. <laughs>